on Sunday, on Sunday, I went to Langata Police Station, having seen what the president said in uh, Mogosho, in Kisi, on the on the 16th Saturday, whereby he issued a death threat against me and other people who have gone to court and successfully challenged his uh, basically nonsensical uh, housing, so-called housing uh, fund, uh, housing levy fund, or housing levy tax, whatever it is. So he made remarks whereby he directly uh, referred, isolated the people who had taken that case to court and said that he was given a sword, the ceremonial sword was given at Kasarani, and that he was going to use that sword not to chop vegetables, not to chop vegetables. He was not given that, chop, that sword for chopping vegetables, but for dealing with crooks like myself and others who had gone to the High Court and successfully challenged this housing so-called housing levy fund, or levy tax, or whatever it is, or affordable housing levy. So those remarks had two issues that got me concerned. The first issue was that the president was threatening violence against that group, and the kind of violence that exterminates he was threatening to kill people by saying he's going to slash them, and uh, another thing, the second thing is that he deliberately dehumanized the people who went to court by calling them crooks. And that particular thing act me. And I can tell you that for me, there's no ground upon which Ruto can stand and call me a crook. People who know the history of this country know that both of us have been taken to court. And him he was accused of theft stealing public assets. I was accused of holding demonstrations to demand good governance. So who, can, who should call the other one a crook? One has been formally indicted for theft, or me was indicted for fighting for good governance. But more than that, the whole purpose of what the president said, and if you look at everything where people are murdered and killed, the first step is to dehumanize them. Call them cockroaches, call them whatever. In this particular case, the president referred to me and my group as crooks, wakora, whom is going to slash. So already they have dehumanized us, and so eliminating us will not be eliminating human beings. He will be eliminating wakora. So concerned about this, my own life, that the president issued, issued a death threat and already dehumanized me, and because I live under the jurisdiction of uh, Langata Police Station, on Sunday I went to Langata Police Station, making an attempt to report this matter, to get an OB. I was kept there for more than six hours, being taken around. Eventually one of the junior officers came and said, my brother, the discussion I've picked is that they are, going to, they are not going to record your statement. And what I would advise you to do is to go to the crime scene where the crime was committed. That's in Kisi. Go to Kisi in Mosocho and make a report in Mosocho. I'm sure those policemen will not be able to, re to refuse. Because here when they refuse, they might even argue that the question of jurisdiction, although it happened on national TV for you, they might argue that the question of jurisdiction does not allow them to be the first point of uh, complaint. So taking that advice, I tried to get a, a flight yesterday to Kisumu or to Homa Bay. All the flights were booked until after next week. I could not get a flight. So, but given the, the concern I have about my own safety and the safety of the other people whom the president referred to as crooks, whom he's going to slash, the people who had gone to court and uh, gotten orders against his uh, housing levy fund, which the court declared to be unconstitutional. 
I decided to drive to Kisi and I drove overnight, go to Mosocho at around uh, 4, 4 o'clock this morning. I went to the police station, I found officers there who handled me very well. They even recorded my complaint in an OB, and the OB is here, for those who can see. It's an OB number 03, stroke 19, stroke 12, stroke 2023. It's OB number 3 of today, recorded at Mosocho Police Station. So after I recorded the OB, they told me that uh, given my current status in society as a senator, they could not record a statement from me at that police station. I needed to be recorded by the senior police officers. So they referred me, they called the OCPD, and they called the DCIO, and told me to come to this other police station. It's called, uh, it's called? Nyanchua. Nyanchua Police Station. So when I go to Nyanchua Police Station, I was well received by the junior officers as we waited for the buses to come. So, first of all, the, pass, the first person who came was the OCPD. Uh, he greeted me and asked me to get, his, get into his office. He's called Mr. Kazungu Charo, the OCPD. And he did something very strange. He began raising an, an issue with my phone. He just claimed that I was recording him. I told him, I'm not recording you for heaven's sake. I'm not an idiot. I don't record people. So, I said, okay, to make you comfortable, let me hand over my phone. So I handed over my phone to one of the people I had come with, my security detail, and they took it out. Then the uh, second thing, he comes down and tells me, do you know that you cannot accuse the president of anything? I said, where do you get that? He says it's in the law. I asked him which section of the law. He didn't, he didn't even know. So I told him, the only, the only thing you can do is look at Article 143 and read it out, which he did. And Article 143 does not stop the president from being investigated and being recorded. It only stops his being prosecuted. He cannot be prosecuted in a court. But the president can be arrested, the president can be processed criminally by the police. They have that power. The president is not above the law. So, after I showed him that, he sort of uh, became angry and began shouting at me and saying, I'm not going to record your statement. You can go anywhere you want, but we are not recording your statement. And so stop wasting your time here. Well, at that point, I saw that there was no point dealing with somebody who thinks he can operate outside the law. So I decided to say, okay, I will uh, park and go, and I intend to go to Ipoa. I intend to go to the police headquarters. As for Mr. Kazungu, I'm going to sue him here in Kisi for denying me public service, uh, services for which I pay. He earns a salary. He's supposed to serve all Kenyans. He was not supposed to argue with me beginning to say that I'm bringing lies, that he was at the, he was at the rally. He didn't hear the president say that. And that is how you create dictators. When you begin protecting and covering up for, excess, uh, uh, for violations of the law, and you are a law enforcer, you embolden the lawbreaker to do worse things than that. So from here, I'm going back to Nairobi, to the police headquarters. I'll try to get Mr. Kome to record my statement, the inspector general. And I also want to involve my power against Mr. Kazungu, as I also prosecute him for violating my right to be served by the state. So those are the few remarks I have. But I am taking the, what the president said seriously. I'm not going to blink. But also, I'm not going to withdraw from the court. We are going to use the court, because a court is a legitimate forum for settling disputes. And the president. He talks of his being not unstoppable. My advice to him is that he's only unstoppable if he's operating within the law. The moment he steps outside the law, he's stopped by the Constitution.